Welcome back. So in this last video on the student's dilemma, uh, I'm going to uh, think about uh, how, I'm gonna to try to give some graphical uh, intuition to how this problem actually ends up getting solved and then talk a little bit about uh, how you could, you know, kind of use this sort of new constraint optimization to do some sort of scenario planning. So first, I want to give a, some graphical intuition for what's going on. So we're thinking about trying to find an optimum within this bivariate space of considering uh, x's and y's that might lead to optimal solutions. The first thing I'm going to do is just graphically think about, you know, what is that feasible space? So one thing we learned was that the total hours has to be less than or equal to 11. So this line x plus y equals 11 defines one boundary between uh, feasible and infeasible solutions. So anything above that line violates that constraint. Anything below that line you know, potentially meets that constraint. But remember, that wasn't our only constraint. So in this problem, we also had the constraint that we weren't going to spend uh, more than eight hours in the uh, language lab. We had another constraint that we weren't going to spend more than seven hours uh, getting math tutoring. We also had minimum uh, hours we needed to spend to pass our French exam, minimum number of hours we need to spend to pass our uh, calc exam. And then we had another line that describes our budget constraint. So you can see that just considering the constraints alone, uh, you know, kind of limits our space for where our feasible solutions could be. Um, and this graphical approach kind of gives us some intuitive understanding and, and you know, could be done in practice as well to kind of understand you know, where, where the feasible constraints uh, solutions are and where, the, where the, any solution outside of this violates those constraints. So now you're thinking about, you know, we're doing an optimization within that space and it could be, uh, the optimum could be any place in the middle of that. You know, so if I had a parabola that happened to have a bowl in the middle, it might end up there. Or it could be that uh, the optimum could be at any point along one of these edges, or it could be at one of the intersections. So unlike when we were thinking about equilibrium where the solutions are always the intersection, here when we're thinking about optimization, the optimum could be anywhere. Uh, and we won't, you know, so it's, we can't just assume it's in the middle. We can't just assume it's at the intersections or along, along a specific edge. We have to actually check all of them. And if you were doing this analytically, you know, uh, and kind of using calc, you know, calc one approaches, you would literally have to check every uh, permutation there. Uh, numerically, it becomes uh, simpler because we just need to be able to propose an initial guess that falls within that space, uh, and then and then calculate our total score within that space, and then let numerical optimization kind of walk through and propose successive values uh, until it finds one that optimizes the problem. In this case, it happens the optimum solution happens to be at the place that intersects your time constraint and your budget constraint, and we have this particular value right here. So that particular value um, turns out uh, to be one where you spend, you know, four and a half hours uh, in math, studying math, six and a half hours studying French and manage to get, you know, a 61.7 in French and a 62.5 in calc. So moving on to thinking about scenarios, you know, with this sort of you know, tool in place, you could you could run easily run other scenarios. So, like, what would happen if you had an extra ten dollars? Where would that change our model, and then how would that change our optimum? Uh, what if you decided to skip lunch and add an hour more to your number of hours you could study? What if the passing grade was sixty five, not fifty? Uh, what if you could only get a less effective tutor, such as the you know grades per hour changed? So how would you implement those sorts of scenarios? 
Uh, so for example, if you had an extra $10, you would shift out your budget constraint to that one line that said, you know, it's like 15 X plus five, 15 over three X plus five Y equals hundred now becomes equal, you know, is less than or equal to hundred is now less than or equal 110 to change one of the constraints. Uh, similarly, if you skip lunch and had more time for studying, you would shift um, not the amount that you could study for any one class, but the total number of hours would go up from 11 to 12. Um, if the passing grade went to 65, you would shift the minimum time that you'd have to spend on any particular uh, grade to pass. In this particular case, it should note that, uh, remember the optimum solution was a 61.7 in one and a 62 point something in the other. So unless you actually could relax these other constraints, you would end up with no viable solutions. Um, and what if you could only schedule time with a less effective tutor, you would change uh, that, that particular slope parameter in the uh, objective function itself. So to summarize as a take home, remember the first step in these constraint optimization problems is identify the things you control, your key variables the knobs you can turn. Because in any decision uh, problem, you know you can't optimize the things you don't have control over. You can only optimize the things that, that you have, that are, that are variables that you can control. You also need to define the thing you're trying to optimize. And you need to write that down mathematically. And you need to write down your constraints mathematically as well, usually as, as greater than or less than statements. If they're not greater than or less than statements, but actual equations, they probably mean that you have more than one objective. And in fact, you know that brings us back to constraints with multiple objectives uh, and things we talked about uh, in the, the earlier videos, uh, you know, kind of beyond the scope of 375 uh, at this moment. Uh, but there are mathematical optimization approaches such as Pareto optimization that can do that multi-objective uh, you can do multiple objective optimization and it's, yeah, it, it exists. It's just not in the, in our current scope. It would require learning a new approach to optimization algorithms. Um, and then finally, uh, once we've constrained our function, our variables, our objective function, our constraints, and then we proceed to numerical optimization. Thanks and uh, wrap up, wrap up from there. <laughs>